everybody, welcome back. I'm doing something a little bit different today. Um, I've got a pocket concertina book. Uh, you've all seen me use them before. And here, what I'm doing is taping around the edges, um, just creating a border around the edges. Um, I'm using, I think it's called Gorilla Tape, this is, but you can use ordinary masking tape. The only reason why I'm using this um, here today is because I've run out of masking tape. Um, so you just put it all the way around the edges. I've uh, laid out a yoga mat on the floor actually and I'm just taping it on there. I often paint on my uh, yoga mat and just cover it, in, um, it um, with plastic if I'm working on the floor like this. And um, it's quite good because um, concertina books, you do need lots of room. Um, but this is only pocket one so and I've been out doing lots of walks and everything along Red River and um, so this video is going to be about, com this is going to be completely intuitive um, work, It's good, but uh, with inside my mind's view is the inspiration taken from Red River which is where I walk. Um, I'm doing this, um, a lot of this with, um, I'm going to be using uh, a lot of willow charcoal and um, things like that so um, I'm keeping it as black and white as I possibly can I'm only going to add a little bit of colour and then at the end of it I want to add some uh, neuro art just um, around this border where you can see me um, where you can see that I'm um, taping off now <clears throat> excuse me so um, I've just folded the book now and pressing it down and so you can see look it it, it kind of um, makes it cut quite solid um, so here I am now so here's the willow charcoal just going to snap it in half and just do these random marks it doesn't matter what marks that you make this a lot this video is going to be a lot about mark making because the, the, the thing is but like I've said to you before, as an artist and as an abstract artist, if you don't play at the beginning of your work, when are you going to play and relax and have fun? And everybody produces their best work when they play and they don't think about it. So here at the moment, I'm just adding some marks and some variations of marks um, just to create like a, like a grey e sort of little bit of um, a misty bit in the middle if you like um, and I'm just rubbing it with my fingers nothing spectacular or difficult about it if you've never painted before you can do this it's it's so easy to do and um, I'm going up and past that that um, border it doesn't matter if you go over the edge of it now because it's you know been pushed down try not to push it down too hard um, because it, it could be difficult to get it off um, somebody let me know in the comments before apparently if you heat something up with the air dryer around the edges you know like um, if you've used masking tape or this gorilla tape and you put um, a heated hair dryer over it for a minute it helps you to move the tape a lot easier so uh, I didn't do that actually it did it did come away quite easy but if I was struggling I think I would have done if my paper was starting to rip so um, yeah so here I am just random marks look some up above some down below I'm not really thinking about anything really um, just just thinking about the woods and the things that's down Red River and there's a little bit of a swoosh, I've just done it slowly to show you and then just smearing that in. Not thinking about it too much and thinking, oh, these have got to look like trees and this has got to look like this and this has got to look like that. It hasn't, it hasn't at all. I work on a few pages, five or six on these little ones together and it's, you can just squirrel across it and don't even think about it. Have you noticed that when I first started off, I was just doing like little tiny marks and a little bit nervous of that open canvas, as they say, you know. Um, but then now I've got into it, I'm not afraid at all, and I'm really just um, smudging it about and swishing it across, not even thinking about it. So, you know, let's see a few more, a few more marks. 
don't be frightened to go up into like a, the sky area if you're creating a bit of a scenic um, just don't think about any of it just come up and go down go dark go light I've done these quite light actually um, I think you know like when they when marks are quite light like this it gives it that feel of like that it's pushing it back yeah that it's like into the into the background you know you're creating a background full of marks and interesting things and this is where your depth comes if you don't do these under layers of marks and um things like this um your picture's going to look flat it's going to look uninteresting and don't forget you you want it to look interesting from a distance but also then when you get closer you want to be able to see marks as well so yeah so the, the next step is pull it all together look and move that out of the way clean the back of it it doesn't really matter because i'm gonna you can paint the other side as well once you've done this side so um just spreading it out just to show you really so you're just marking on uh, working um up to these um taping off areas and um enjoying it squashing it down all the time just to, it's because when you put tape on it it does make it quite difficult so here now i've got out some ink this is indian ink and um and then i've just got an old rag here as you can see I'm quite liking this rag now. It's getting more and more marks on it. It's quite good. <laughs> just with a cotton bug, just dipping it in. And again, I'm going to see how many marks and different marks and things that I can make with a cotton bud and ink. Not thinking about it. And do you see that because the first layer was um, very pale and rubbed in nice and soft, these dark areas now come right forward and it gives it that straight away, you know, you can see. So here's our folding the pages over and smudging it in a little bit. Random marks, it's completely intuitive, remember? Although we don't want them to be symmetrical marks, you know, we want it all organic. And, um, um, you know, I just want, I want to enjoy it. And again, just swirling across the pages with it and not thinking about it, trying to put a little bit on each page. Doesn't matter if it's not on every page, is you like some squiggly marks at the top always remember that if you make some marks and you don't like them then you can always knock them back with either some white paint i think later on in the year i knocked some back with some um white tissue because it's quite transparent it gives it a bit of a film over the top you know and it makes it um a little bit more sort of interesting as well Remember, if you're make, creating a straight line, lines are very important um, because, um, you know, they, you need to be able to um, perhaps break the line a little bit. Okay, a stamping ink pad is the best tool. I just love this tool. You can do straight lines with it. You can do smearing with it. You can make rectangles. You can make squares. You can make triangles. You can make them like rooftops. It, it's, it's never ending and in the top there I've made, and way around I use these little stamps as well that I've got there on my little rag um, just to put the odd little flower in you can put in whatever you want but this is starting to fill up a little bit more now and it looks different it's quite nice having those straight edge shapes in here with all the organic twisty shapes um, it gives it that difference getting out the ink pan again and this time I'm going to stamp little tiny flowers. Everybody knows how to do stamping. You just press it on. But the stamp pad itself, I've had this stamp pad now. It must be two years. It's never dried up. It's dried up more than it is that it has been. But um, I like it. Um, if you, Obviously, the harder that you press down when you're pressing it onto your paper, the um the stronger the mark will be but you can pull it and you can drag it and you know it's uh you can, if you use the edge you can use it for straight lines you can pull it again and you can get lots of different lines and effects just little fine line going in here now just some squiggles so that it gives that difference in the widths of the of the things because you don't want them to be all matching do you of um 
you know, if he was out, branches and things are going to be different. Um, picked up the willow charcoal again, placed it on its side, and you can do some nice straight lines with that, as you can see here on the second panel in. I'm just showing you a little bit here of how these marks are building up. I don't particularly like that squiggle at the top, but I can knock that back. Um, and the flowers there, look, and it's all starting to come together. A little bit more spread out down here. What I didn't tell you was uh, there were some um, ink splatters that I did there using just a Sharpie pen. And I just literally flicked the pen and um, it came out. And also I used a fountain pen as well for a few more. So um, that was uh, interesting to do. Um, this, I'm just using this this um, mark. You just find anything that's around the house for mark making. Um, it makes it great fun. This was just what you use. That you put inside one of those drinkers and you put your... Um, you can put fruit inside them to make your drink um, taste nice when you, you know, inside water. But this was a spare one. I don't use it. And so instead of chucking it, I like, thought, hmm... Look at that, I can use it like rolling it. That's got make some different marks and um, can spread them up. They're very faint, but they are there. And these are the things that when you get close up to a painting that gives it the depth. It, can you see them? They're very faint. And people will think, how has she done that? How has she done that mark? Well, this is how I've done it. I've just got this container in a bit and just used it. And um, you're never going to get wasted, you know, and um, you can just use it for all sorts of things. But um, I have um, lots of things for doing mark making, but I have I have um, minimised myself a little bit because I, I do get carried away a little bit. And then if you use too many different tools, I've found that personally I just overwork it. So, so here now, look, I'm putting in some little lines with my ink pad again. And... Um, just some faint little obviously pressing on faintly look there and it, it just it just comes out lovely you can make like i said you could make them into buildings you can smear it across because it gives it like a middle value and it it kind of it just starts to fill in the areas and then when you press it on hard you can see it's made it like a building so when you turn it the opposite way, this is like just smearing up some marks more. But when you turn it at an angle and press on hard, it just looks like a rooftop if you do it near the bottom. And then that gives you ideas of, you know, because it's a perfect rectangle, it makes it nice that you can use it. You can do it faintly and then you can add your paint to it and off you go. Um, so, but I'm mostly using it for lines. I found it good for making the trees and things. So, yes, it was very interesting to do. And, uh, yeah, moving on. So, this time now, I've got out a um, box of white tissues and I'm adding gel medium over the top. And this is how I mean by knocking it back. You can't actually see this showing up very well, but it's giving it a nice, um, you know, it's not the dark areas back that I didn't like, and um, it's giving it nice texture. Here now I've got out some stencils, and with my um, with my charcoal, willow charcoal, I've rubbed it around inside the circle and then used my, um, my little, um, Oh, what do you what do you call them? Well, I've just I've just been using them. Um, they they like little ear things, aren't they? You know, um, I've forgotten what you call them. More stenciling and rubbing it in, and uh, using my fingers this time, and so it's filled it up nicely now. And as I say, and as you look closely at it, you can now see that it's filled up, and these look like like the orbs. Remember that I told you about coming through the trees. When the gel medium dries, it will dry optically clear, so there's no problem with that. And um, you can get it from any art shops. I like I like the um, shiny one, you know, the one with a bit of a sheen. I don't like the matte one, but that's just personal taste. So that's how it looks so far. A bit messy, you might think, but now you have to be creative and think about it. 
And when you start to now and you pucker it up and you concertinery it together more, it starts to look like it's getting a little bit of depth because like the leaf's going round the corner. And now you can start and think about it instead of just playing all the time. I can start and think about how you can make things have more depth and how it, you can make it work. So um, there's lots of dark areas there. I quite like that. Again, giving it more, um, giving it more depth. Adding some watercolor black now because I want more contrast, more contrast. And obviously, the darker I do things now on top of those light, it's going to come forward, which is going to give it the depth. I also added a few runners there that you can't see very well, but I did add some runners. Just let it, just let it run down. And uh, went round the leaf there to give that a bit more. And then this looks nice. I would probably knock that back a bit in, in a little while though. Another closer view with some darker areas now. doesn't take very long so here I'm moving the, the tape on here what I haven't shown you is I've painted some blue paint on a piece of paper and then just pressed it all over the top of the painting before I removed the tape and that's what's given it a lovely look of um, it's got like a feckled look to it for the sky so it looks now like there's a building in the middle. Look, there's flowers coming through and it's knocked back with the sky. And um, you can see orbs like coming through these like little trees now. And uh, so if they wanted to leave this as it is now with this board and I've removed the tape, you can call this kind of finished. You can add to it whatever you want. But I like to move on and to press on. So um, I do like to, to do my books like this um as you can see look you can go through it now and you can look at what you've done really pretty and a nice way to display um but what i want to do is to add some neuro art as a pattern around those blank areas so that's the next job i've turned the book over and i've just made a start just drawing them in what I have done is that the lines, the thick lines that's in the paintings in the centre, I've tried to pull, carry on pushing them out to the edge, like that. Yeah, and that's where you're letting go all your frustrations and you're freeing yourself. So, and then you just start making connections and you just enjoy it. This is a relaxing time. This will take a while because you've got to go right the way across your book, but it's a lovely, lovely thing to do. And um, it adds to your painting that you've already done. It adds to the, it looks like the, the brambles were around the trees and it's been extremely enjoyable to do this book. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really have. Um, I'm concentrating hard on these connections because um, I want to enjoy the fact that, you know, you're freeing all the feelings of any pressures Again, as I started doing this this evening, um, I was quite feeling under pressure and stressed. Um, still haven't got that lovely job that I want. And um, so it's always on my mind and pushing me in the background. Can you see how I've joined that line up to the one that's in the picture so that it flows out of the picture and then goes off the page? And that's the, that's the effect and it gives a beautiful effect around the edge of course you could do paint over this if you wanted and you could actually add it into your picture if you wanted but i think that the separation of the border around the edge um gives it a nice effect if you was doing this and you didn't you didn't want to do the neuro art and the neuro lines you could just leave it blank and um, for all you abstract painters out there that's what i normally do um, but there's a lot of people here who enjoy the neuro art and I really enjoy the, the, the relaxation that it brings through working through it. Um, absolutely lovely. And um, you can use your lines, you can have some can be thick and some can be fat and some can be thin and you can just work along. I've done this in real time so you can see how exactly how relaxing it is and how you can just move along with it. 
this was just a fine line de pen, fine line de pen, but it was a different kind. It was one of those ones that was a bit like a, it, well, it says a brush on it. It just has that felt tip pen feel to it, but um, it's quite nice to use, um, nice and soft, and um, because I'm not actually going on any art or ink um, or, you know, or paint, it's not going to dry it up, so it's quite nice to keep it. So um, I just continued and moved around the edges and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, and then, you know, we can eventually build up a lovely community and don't be frightened to pop over to Susie's Art on Facebook. Uh, there might be extra videos on there that you've not seen. Um, that's on here because I do move things around a bit and I'm also on Instagram as well and um, it'd be nice to build up a community of like-minded people who enjoy neuro art and also enjoy abstract painting and intuitive painting I mean this is totally intuitive but naturally because I've been for a walk and down Red River and it's just an entanglement of trees at the moment um, it's like I took a million photographs as I always do and got back and looked at them all and really enjoyed them, you know, and um, it sort of imprints on your mind. I don't know how it works. It's very strange. And I'm sure that when I go to bed um, as well, it will imprint on my mind again. So when you start doing all your marks, even though you're mark making at the beginning, it makes it like really lovely and enjoyable. Um, because you're playing if you start thinking about what you're doing and, and become tight straight away as soon as you start your art it's, you're going to remain tight all the way through you can see this has been I've started off loose carried on being loose right the way through till three quarters towards the end until I realised oh actually these are looking like trees and things and so maybe I can put some sky in like I explained you paint the paper piece of plain, plain paper and you just literally press it onto your picture and um, it, it gives it this lo lovely dappled look and it's uh, really nice still continue with him with the neuro art um nearly finished showing you this little bit i don't show you the whole lot obviously but you imagine how long it's taken me because you can sit there and you just you can just open it up like a little book and just sit and relax and do it it's lovely just a couple of pages at a time or you can open it right up on the table and do it right the way across or you can not do it at all um the choice is yours but this um, hasn't taken me very long at all. And these pocket concertina books, they're absolutely lovely. They're really cheap. And if you don't want to do the Nero art part of it, if you want to take this out on location, you can do it that way too. But you do need to have quite a lot of marks on your page, I've noticed, to be able to take it out and then take out your mark making tools out with you. Because like I said, it's the marks that make it interesting to look at and the dark areas and the light areas and the squiggles and the scrapes and the scratching and the putting on paint taking away paint oh i forgot to mention that there's some woody pencils were what i used to um inside some stencils and um yeah you can see how it's going along now and uh, that would be how how it would move along and some of the lines I've taken them out of the page and some of them I haven't so um but yes very de-stressing and very nice to do so here's the finished version now and so you can see that it looks like trees but it could be something else and there's some flowers in there and you can see the sky drop down a nice little building look you can see this the orbs shining through there from the sun and uh, if i show you a little bit closer i've gone round the edge round right round as right round the border and it's so this time the neuro art has been made a pattern around the edge it does 
clash a little bit, but it also looks like it's encased in a net. So I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Um, I do prefer them without the Nero art, I must admit, but you might enjoy doing that and prefer to do it with it and you can just do your lines uh, how you want to do them. So I hope that you've liked it all. And um, yes, so just a little bit closer look. Okay then, bye for now, bye.